Number 53. Two arrangements of atoms are possible for a compound with a molar mass of about 45 grams per mole that contains 52.2% carbon, 13.1% hydrogen, and 34.7% oxygen by mass. Write the Lewis structures for the two molecules. Okie dokie. So we did a very similar problem like this in 51 and 52. So if you want a more in-depth version, you could always go back to see those. But as of right now, we need to learn how to go from percents of atoms to an empirical formula. And write this down, guys. This is super important. If you ever need to go from a percent to an empirical formula, it's basically a four and it could be a five step process. So you always start with your percents, which will always lead you to grams. From grams, you could always get moles. We learned that in like chapter two. And then from moles, you could always get a mole ratio, which is something new. And then from there, we can get our empirical formula. Now, they told us that we have a molar mass of 45 grams per mole. So probably we have to get a molecular formula because they gave us a molar mass. So let's get started. How do we go from grams? Well, how do we go from a percent of something to grams? Well, if we added all of these percentages up, we would get 100%. And we can say that, okay, well, we had 100%, and it was based off of 100 gram sample. So if that's the case, we can say that the percentages will just equal the amount of grams. So in this case, I had 52.2% carbon, which turned into 52.2 grams of carbon. I have 13.1% hydrogen, which turned into 13.1 grams of hydrogen. And then for oxygen, 34.7% of oxygen, which is 34.7 grams of oxygen. Now, for this type of process, especially if you need to find an empirical formula, I like to do all of the atoms at the same time. Um, it just makes it easier. So I'm going to be doing each one of these grams to moles, the mole ratio. We're going to be all doing it at the same time for each atom. So now we're at the gram stage. How do we go from grams of something to moles of something? We should remember that um, ratio, right? One mole of anything always equals the molar mass, which is in grams of that element or compound. In this case, we have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So... Use your ratio times by that ratio. Grams of carbon goes on the bottom because you don't want grams anymore, so it has to go on the opposite side. And moles of carbon goes up on top. And remember, one mole of anything equals the molar mass in grams of that atom or compound. So one mole would equal the molar mass of carbon on the periodic table. And the molar mass of carbon has 12.01 grams. So it would be 12.01 that cancels out the grams and you're left with moles. So we're going to do the same thing for the other two atoms at the same time. So grams of hydrogen goes on the bottom, mole of hydrogen goes up on top. One mole of hydrogen equals the mass, which is 1.008. You can say, you know, one, but I'm just going to put whatever is on the periodic table and then grams of hydrogen would cancel. And do the same thing here. Grams of oxygen on the bottom, mole of oxygen up top, one mole of oxygen equals, if we go to oxygen on the periodic table, it's 16.00. So basically 16. And that would cancel out the grams. So now let's do all the math of these three combined, and we would get the moles of each individual atom. So 52.2 divided by 12.01, you get roughly, we'll give it three sig figs, so 4.35 moles of carbon, 13.1 divided by 1.008 would be basically 13.0, I'll say. Moles of hydrogen, and then 34.7 divided by 16, I get 2.17 moles of oxygen. All right, so now we're at this stage, right? We just found out the moles. Awesome. But now how do we go from moles to a mole ratio? Easy peasy. All you got to do is just analyze the moles that you have here and you divide each one 
by the lowest number of moles. That's it. So you have 4.35 moles, 13, and 2.17. Which one is the lowest number? It's 2.17. So you'll divide all three of these by 2.17. So divide 2.17, divide by 2.17, and then divide by 2.17. So this comes out to only one mole of oxygen now. And at this stage of the game, when you find your mole ratios, you want to have um, whole numbers. So if I do 13 divided by 2.17, you get 5.99, but that is very, very close to 6 moles of hydrogen. And then 4.35 divided by 2.17, you get 2. So there's your whole numbers. Everything is nice and neat. So now, to go from your mole ratio to empirical formula, all you got to do is just make the compound. So these, subs well, these numbers will turn into the subscripts. So it looks like you have two carbons, so C2H6O. And that would be your empirical formula. Now we just have to find out what the molecular formula is, if it matches the molar mass that they gave us, which was 45. So whenever we do that, we have to take the molar mass that was given and divide it by the empirical mass. I'll just put EM. Now, we should know how to find an empirical mass from a formula, right? You just multiply two carbons by its weight, which was 12, six hydrogens, which was one, and then the 16, right? So I'm going to put over here that the molar mass was 45 grams per mole that they gave us in the problem. And now I'm going to just find out what the empirical mass is. So I'm going to do 2 times 12.01 plus 6 times 1.008 plus a 16, and you get technically roughly the same number, 46 grams per mole. So this is going to come out to be a whole number. You'll try to make it a whole number. So 45 divided by 46 obviously is going to be very, 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 very close to one. So that means that the molar mass is one time larger than the empirical mass, which means that the molar mass equals the empirical mass. So the empirical formula should equal the molecular formula. So we're going based off of C2H6O. Now we have to write the Lewis structure for two potential molecules of C2H6O. So we just try different combinations that work. Remember, hydrogen can't be in the middle. So either you're going to put the two carbons in the middle, or maybe you'll put an oxygen in the middle. You, you should kind of be... Um, try different things out and see what works. So for the first one, maybe I'll put the two carbons together. And now I have six hydrogens to distribute. So uh, maybe I'll put a hydrogen here, a hydrogen here. That's three already. And now I'll put a hydrogen, a hydrogen, but I got to put the oxygen somewhere. And remember, hydrogen can't be in the middle. So I can't put it like this because then the hydrogen would be between carbon and oxygen. So I'm going to just switch these around. The oxygen would go here, and then the last remaining hydrogen here. And now hydrogen has one valence electron, so I'm just going to put one dot for every one of these. Oxygen has six valence electrons, so six dots. And then each carbon has four valence electrons, and then you bind single bonds and see what comes out of it. So I'm going to bind... Single, single, single. Everybody gets single. I'm just following the foolproof Lewis structured method, but we've done tons of problems like this. I know that you guys probably know how to do this by heart by now, right? So this is this and like that. And now if you actually looked at each one of them, carbon has two, four, six, eight. So that has the octet. This carbon also has two, four, six, eight. And then this oxygen has two, four, six, eight. So I know that this is the first structure. So I'll just put, you know, a number one here. Now I'll put the second structure over here. We just have to think a little bit outside the box to try to get a second structure. Now it seems that I put a carbon, carbon, and oxygen. So let's try to switch it up. Maybe I'll put a carbon with an oxygen and then a carbon. That looks different. And I'll try to be as symmetrical as possible. So maybe I'll put, um, you know, 
hydrogen, three hydrogens on this carbon, and three hydrogens on this carbon. Each hydrogen has one valence electron, so I'll put one dot around each hydrogen. Each carbon has four valence, so I'll put four dots around each carbon. And then each oxygen has six, so one, two, three, four, five, six. And now make those single bonds. So the hydrogen bonds here, there's one bond here, one bond here, and one bond here. So this carbon's already good. It has two, four, six, eight electrons, so that one's good. There's a bond here. This oxygen is good. Two, four, six, eight. So that's the octet. And now if I just finish bonding, this carbon is good. Two, four, six, eight. And all the hydrogen want to only have a single bond, and that's what they have. So that's the two structures. You either have the COC backbone as here, or you have the CCO backbone like here. And that's the end for 53. This one was probably the hardest out of the percent comps that we've been doing. There's only three of them. So if you guys know how to do this one, you are golden for your quizzes, tests, you name it. Thank you so much for tuning in. If any of your classmates are struggling with chemistry, you could always throw them this channel. I wouldn't mind, right? <laughs> Thank you so much. Tell your friends about us. We're pretty cool people, right? Thank you so much. Subscribe to the channel if you like. If not, that's okay. We'll be here. And I'll see you guys all in the next question. Have an awesome day.